to share what I actually have uh, stuffed in my little sewing and crafting space here, which is basically just about maybe three feet or so by about five and a half feet um, long. It's this little space here at the end of my bed, and it's the only place in my tiny apartment that I could actually manage a little crafting corner. And I do have a video of it um, that I've already put up just showing the space a little bit. But I've been having some questions about how I fit everything in this little space and do I fit everything. So I'm going to give you a little look inside the uh, space a little bit. So here I have my favorite IKEA desk it, or uh, table. It does come out and it pretty much about fits this whole space and it's my main work table. What I have it set up for now is just um, a little work surface here. Um, I have Jasper of course who is my sewing supervisor <clears throat> and I have this cover on it because I don't want cat hair on this which is my do-it-yourself ironing pad which I'll show you in a little bit. Thank you for your help Jasper I appreciate it and we'll start here and this here is my mending box and it is where I keep all my little things that I use for sewing on buttons or fixing things or just little um, sewing things, little sewing needs that I might have. And it's just kind of all organized and set up there. And in these little storage boxes, I keep, um, there really isn't like a nice little size here. And basically what I keep in them here, I'll show you one. Get the lid off, are my patterns. So for things I'm working on or want to sew, I keep patterns and stuff in here. And in these drawers on the side of the shelf, uh, this table on this side, these are all my sewing accessories. So buttonhole makers and different things I might have for my vintage sewing machines um, are all in there. But yeah, these are like patterns. It's a nice little size. And they fit really nicely right here on the side of this table. Works perfectly. And now that I have this front space here clear, let me move this. Like I said, this is pretty much just a cat hair cover that I've had to use. And if I take it off, you can see here, oh, here we go. I've made this do-it-yourself ironing board right here. So I've just gotten a piece of plywood and had it cut to the dimensions here of this table and I have a no slip grip piece there and on the back you can see where I have just used a staple gun and stapled the material to this board and I do have under here um, some batting and um, some silver ironing board lining. It makes a great ironing board surface here. It's long enough I can actually do a pair of pants or something longer um, if I'm quilting several blocks together here that I need. And it's a great little ironing board surface and I just, I love it. Now I can actually sit at my table when I have my table up here and I can use this surface here, this corner to iron with as I have my sewing machine here that I'm working with, which is really kind of nice. So I can also take the ironing board completely off and put it on my bed there. And then I can work on this little table. I can put my small sewing machine here, my featherweight if I want. I can actually sew right on here if I'm just piecing and I don't even have to pull out the whole table. Just push a chair up here and I can work here without the ironing board uh, on there. So it's really uh, usable for small space sewing. Over here, I have another little set of these boxes. They're a little bit larger than the other ones and they fit nicely in there. And I have in this front one, these are all my serger uh, threads, which fit nicely in there. And then I keep notions and stuff, buttons and zippers and things like that in the bottom too, which is really kind of awesome. And on the top, I just have some little um, containers. This is just a vintage Pyrex Friggy here. And it's where I keep some of my smaller uh, rulers that I want to keep handy for quilting. So those pretty much just sit in there. Um, and then underneath the box, I just can put little things. Um, currently it's empty because I just got that box, but it's sort of just a nice little box. 
Oh, actually, I do have something in there. I have a magnetic wrist pin cushion and some scissors. I haven't really decided what I'm going to do with that, but I kind of liked the box, so I got it. And here I have some sorting tins here. This is just a, a little metal uh, tin I got at a thrift store, and I spray painted it yellow to kind of match my area a little bit. And I just kind of can throw things in here that I need to sort out and put away so they don't get lost, little small things. And then this is one of my favorite things. It's just this little bowl I bought at an antique fair, a little ceramic bowl. And I use this bowl for everything. I sort um, sometimes fabric scraps in here or small things that I'm going to be piecing together. I can cut my half square triangles and two and a half inch squares and things like that and just sort of put them in here. And then I have this bowl to work with. I've also used this bowl on my sewing table to throw... Um, threads and and things I want to throw away in as I'm sewing. I'm, I've just done so much with this bowl. I've even used this bowl to throw popcorn in while I'm in here working and I can just eat popcorn out of it. And this is sort of just a catch-all bowl and I just love it. And this sits right on there for storage, which is perfect and makes a little tidy sort of area there. Over here, I have my featherweight. I have to keep this plastic cover on it because my cat will go after the thread. But I have my little featherweight sewing machine, and it sits right here on top of these totes. And it's just my, one of my favorite machines. I love this for quilting and for piecing, um, even smaller crafts. It's just um, an amazing little machine for that. And I could actually use it right from here. Um, I usually don't, but I could. And I've kind of created this little table for it to sit on this little storage sort of stand out of these totes here. I have four of them. And these are pretty much just where I keep my pre-cuts. So all my pre-cut fabrics are all in there, easy to get to. My fat quarter bundles, my layer cakes, my charm packs and things like that are all in there. And I just put this on because it sort of matches the one I cover my table with and give you a little closer look here. And the bins are labeled. And then what I have up here in these totes are all of my AccuQuilt dies. The AccuQuilt is just, if you're not familiar with it, it is a um, cutting machine you can get an electric one or just one that you hand crank. I have uh, the hand crank kind and it cuts all your, um, your shapes so that you don't have to um, hand cut them. So you get really accurate cuts and I really love the AccuCut system. I have the AccuQuilt, the baby one here. It's in um, a storage bag and then I do have the full size AccuQuilt as well. So um, I like the little one a lot of times to use in this space and it fits most of these dies, but I do have some larger dies that require the, the larger one. So I do have both of those. And on top, I have my two little fabric buckets here. And in one, I keep um, quilting patterns that I want to make or things that I'm working on, which is kind of nice to have in there. And that's in the one. And then the other one are cross stitch patterns. So I keep a lot of those things in there because I do like to do cross stitch as well as um, quilting. And I also do um, like loom knitting and I can do that in here, which is nice, small little projects. Up here on this shelf, I do have one of my vintage sewing machines. I have uh, 13 or 14 now. Uh, this is one of my favorites. It's a 1956 Brothers Streamliner. I love the color of it. This doesn't do justice in this light right now. And what's really nice about this vintage machine is that I do have the original uh, magazine ad where it shows right there my um, vintage Streamliner, which is really cool. And this magazine is from 1956, this magazine page. I also have another magazine page up there. That's a replica though. And let's see, in here I have another little container that I did get, a little ceramic dish that I did get at an, an antique fair. And it just holds like, you know, some washi tape. I don't have a lot of it, but what I do have is, is in there. And behind the sewing machine on this little uh, rack here, are some of my smaller um, uh, rulers for quilting. 
I keep some of those there. They're sort of handy and easy to get to. I do have most of my larger rulers are hanging up behind these AccuQuilt die buckets, which is sort of nice. Don't usually see them. You can see my, this is a really big cutting mat. It stores nice and flat behind the shelf. Speaking of shelves, here I have this um, small belly bookcase here, which I love. And I just have a little decoration on the top. And let's see what I have on my shelves. Here I have just some random little books. And in this little tote here, pull it down. I have some projects that I'm planning on working with. They're all kitted up. Some <clears throat> table runner projects that I'm planning and um, just some project bags that I have kind of ready to go, but I sort of kit them up and put them in this bucket. Let me get it up here. And it just slides right in there out of the way. Here I have some uh, sewing books. Some of these are vintage, some of them are not. And over here, this is a, <clears throat> a lap desk, a lap desk, a lap stand or a table stand. I love this. It's made by, um, I think it's Kay's Creations and it is for cross stitching. It is fabulous. I didn't think I could find a lap stand that would be comfortable to put in my lap while I'm cross stitching that wouldn't fall over or tilt or just be more trouble than it's worth. And this one works out really, really well. I absolutely love it. <clears throat> I'll do a little video on that, but it's, uh, it's really nice and it fits just right there on that shelf. And here I have my vintage sewing books, which I love. And then in this shelf, this is a bowl I use when I'm doing a little bit of my, uh, I don't really crochet, but I do make these little sewing machine uh, spool pin. Um, I don't know if you call that a doily or whatever, but I do make these. And I use this little bowl when I'm doing that. I also have one that's a chicken, but that one's more, I use it more decoratively. And inside of here, I just have a bunch of uh, mini charm packs, a whole bunch of them in there. And then just some more, you know, books and stuff down there that I have. This is my small little wall here where I can, you know, make my project planner there. And then I have another vintage ad. This one is not a replica. This one is as well out of a magazine. And just, you know, little things I want to hang handy. Uh, I have a comfortable chair here that I bought and you'll see this big pillow in here. And the nice thing about this pillow is that I use it when I'm cross stitching. If I'm not using my little lap stand there, I can sit on a couch or on my bed or somewhere. And I can put this really big pillow on my lap. And the nice thing about this big pillow is that I can sort of rest my arms and my work on it while it's in my lap and I don't get uh, fatigued by holding up the, uh, the frame for the cross stitch. So I do use that sometimes. Let's move it out of the way <clears throat> so we can see. Oh, let's go over this here first. This um, little shelf here does hold quite a few things nice and tidily. I do have on the top these pull-out bins. And in this one, I just have, you know, some random scissors. When I'm sewing with my vintage sewing machines, I have my um, little uh, lubricant there. Here I have a rotary cutter, and these are some Chapman sewing machine uh, tools, and I have them in this little cup here. I can pull the cup out nicely. In the back, I have my quilting journal where I keep track of patterns and things that, um, that I need to keep track of. Um, this is one of my Orofil thread boxes. I do have a couple of these, and it's where I keep my Orofil threads. I usually have them all stacked up here. And then in this box here, I have my drafting supplies. My, um, my nice pencils and colored pencils and different things so that if I'm drafting a um, or just drawing out a quilt pattern or something, I have all my tools there for that. If it's right in there. This is a 10 by 10 baking pan that I found and I just spray painted it to sort of match my my area. And this is really great because, let's put it on the table over here. Oh, cat's on the table. So this will hold a layer cake perfectly. It's 10 by 10 and it's really nice. And I do actually have uh, two of these. I have one that I've spray painted yellow as well. 
And what I like to do is I can sort out my layer cake and then put it in this pan. And then in the pan on the other side of my machine, I can put, or other side of the table, as I'm cutting the layer cakes, I can pull a layer cake off, cut it as I want, and then separate the pieces in the other pan. And then scooch the other pan over, put my machine up, and then I can sew the pieces together and put the finished block back into this now empty pan. So these are um, really great. I'm thinking about getting some for eight inches as well. <clears throat> but this is a 10 by 10 and I just love it. it works really well really well and in this pullout tray or basket I just have um, here are some random little twine uh, I keep some of my vintage sewing machine bobbins in here most of my vintage sewing machine bobbins are all metal my modern machines I'll take plastic but I do keep some of the vintage ones in here and in here I have a couple of different rolls of um, masking tape but this is a lightweight masking tape it's not like the heavy stuff and um, you can use this for a lot of things you can use it to make um, seam lines uh, on your sewing machine so if you're sewing and you want to measure out exactly how far you want your uh, edge of your fabric or your seam to be you can put this on here and kind of like washi tape it's really low tacky so it just comes off without any um, leaving any residue and I also use this at on the edges of my um, cross stitching fabric so that it doesn't fray while I'm working on it and I have it in yellow and then I have like as they call it you know um, delicate surface here or surface delicate there it is different languages but anyway scotch tape makes some um, so I have this and then I have the a blue one back there and then I have some extra bobbin holders back there which are currently empty and then this is just a random bag of nonsense now this is a nice washi tape I like this is made by cluck cluck so and it actually if you're quilting it has um, the center line this is where your needle position is and then it's got a quarter inch seam so you put it on here right up to not under your sewing needle but right up to the edge and you line the red line up with your needle and then you always know where your quarter inch seam is love this stuff so i do have that back there in this bin here i keep everything i need for ironing my best press and i have quite a few of the best press because i love it and it comes in a lot of different uh, scents i think i have uh tea rose and caribbean and lavender and i think this is just a plain and then i have my taylor's hams and just different things my spray bottle different things i need for um for ironing or for pressing and then this is just one of the sewing machine pads that i've made double-sided i have a few of these you really only i guess need one but sometimes i do like to change it out a little bit and that just goes in there and then in here just a bunch oh here's another sewing machine pad and these are just a bunch of vintage irons i love vintage irons for um, crafting and small projects and then i also have a couple of modern ones a rowenta and an aliso like mini sewing machine or mini iron and i'll do a video on those too and these down here just hold like clothing items like socks and extra winter things that i might need but i store away so this just fits nicely up here and I usually have the yellow one right on top of it so it just sits right in that area and then we get to sort of my more chaotic sort of spot which kind of mostly hides behind my chair here I have a bin of things that need to be sorted through and um, some project kits I haven't completed yet um, just a sort of little random tote I tend to find if I have a tote in a small space like this like a little basket um, I can put things in the basket instead of just setting them all over the place and they stay tidy and when this gets full I know I have to just take some time to deal with it and put it all away and these are all of my pressing pads like my wool pads and my alpaca pressing pad I have them in different sizes these ones are the largest really large pressing pad and alpaca pad I like the wool pressing pads and I also like the alpaca so I have them uh, both and these sizes back here are a little bit larger than a fat quarter so I can iron an entire fat quarter um, on that at once this is just a little foam board because I'm gonna make some design boards out of it and the rest of these are just different size um, these are just different size wool pads and alpaca pads here and then back here I have another sewing machine sewing machine Ugh. 
I have another ironing board pad I made and this one is a 14 by 14 so I can use this one for um, ironing larger blocks anything up to a size 14 um, on that and you can see the pretty pattern and this is decorator weight um, fabric it's actually by Lori Holt all of my ironing board little ironing board do-it-yourself ones are um, in her fabric the really light uh, canvas almost like but it's called a decorator weight I believe it's called my happy place and that's what I have there and these are actually my sewing boxes and you see a big stack but they're actually separated this is my catch-all twin a little tin there I'll show you that in a minute this is a little box I keep right next to my sewing machine area or sewing area get the... come on there we go and it just sits right here and it's handy so that when I need a quick wonder clip I have them here and I have the small and the medium and I can just grab a wonder clip and clip something if I need it it just sits handy I actually have a whole bunch of these wonder clips in a tote but I just keep about uh, 15 to 20 of these just right handy so I don't have to go and get anything when I'm sewing and I need one it's just right here where I can reach it so that's what that is and then these are actually separated by what I'm working on so this is all my cross stitching stuff I don't have very much I'm not a giant cross stitcher I just do a little bit <clears throat> so everything I need for cross stitching what I'm working will be right here in this one the next one is for quilting and this one is a little bit larger it's a three tier and this one has bunches of threads and just different pins and rotary cutters and just anything I need for quilting. I really don't get into those like wicker ones or those ones with the little puffy tops like my mending box. I really like these. These work out really well for me and they can hold everything I could use for that particular um, hobby. And then the bottom one is all my sewing machine stuff. Or regular garment sewing uh, some crafting um, pins and scissors and just everything so this is just all the things I would use for regular sewing and I keep them all here again they're all handy easy to get to and when you're working in a small space you just have to figure out how things work best for you and how they can store you know nicely where they're still easy to get to and this little tin I just love I use this tin for a lot of things it's kind of a little catch-all at times like right now um, a lot of times when I'm um, quilting I'll just take you know these little things out of here I just have some random rickrack at the moment these are my little um, like jumper fabric I guess you call them some people call them starters and enders if I need any so I keep that handy for when I'm quilting and this is just a little pop-up thread catcher so you can put your little trash scraps in there and your threads and what's nice is that I can put this up it's actually made by the gypsy quilter this particular um, one is made specifically for the fat quarter shop but you can buy them at your local you know sewing shop or quilt shop um, usually in purple and it's made by the gypsy quilter and I love it just a little pop-up uh, trash bin so I'll have this up on the table and then I'll usually have this up and what I use this one for is this is all the scraps that I can save all savable sizes that can be cut down for quilting so if I have larger pieces left I'll just throw them in here while I'm cutting and then they can be dealt with later cut down or even saved just if they're big enough like these just saved just as they are and um, they can be stored in the scrap bin for quilting which is really nice so the trash and then the saveable so I use that when I'm a uh, sewing and then I just keep my enders and leaders or whatever you want to call it there and I have a project coming up that I need these for so I just pulled them out and set them right there so they're ready to go um, so that's what's there and then in this little area I have another little um, metal tin down there and this is where I hold my drafting paper for patterns like you know pattern paper and this is sort of cool little handy deal here and this was actually a knitting needle box but I use it for quilting rulers for my tall ones that are two inches or less wide because you never really know like where you're going to put these things you know these little skinny guys like these which I use um, when I'm making half square triangles um, see what else I have in there 
here's another ruler. So these long quilting rulers that are also um, skinny, there's not really a good place to put them. I have a turner in there. I have some smaller um, half square triangle seam guides and just, you know, different things in there. But they fit perfectly, put the lid on, in this um, knitting needle box. So just a little hack of mine. I just found this on clearance one day and went, oh, my Lanta, that would be great to store those large um, rulers in that are always floating around that I'm never really sure about like where to put them. And then they just sit right down in that box. And then I have just a random dowel. This is what I use to open up my curtains because they're way up there and I can open my curtains with it. So, and then I have an extra light that I can put, you know, when I need a little bit more light in here. And then I have some, um, these are my smaller cutting mats, kind of just handy right there. My larger cutting mats, I actually store right between my bed and my table. So they're nice and flat right in between here. So they don't get um, misshapen or anything. And let's go over to the next area. Now this basket, pardon my feet, just sort of sits loose. It's the only thing in my sewing room or my sewing space here that's kind of, I don't know, I don't really like how it just sits there. But the reason being is I don't really have anywhere else to put it. And at least it has handles on the side and I can move it back and forth. And this is where I keep my cross stitching. So everything that I'm working on is in here. I currently have um, a Christmas project that I'm working on. Um, this is already set and ready to go. There's nothing on it yet. It's just the fabric. I have a project there that I'm getting ready to do. And then back here, I keep all my project bags of all the things I'm working on or planning to work on. And they're all neatly sort of stacked in this little bag, this little tote. And it's got two handles and I can just pick it up and bring this anywhere I'm going. So if I'm gonna go sit on the couch in the living room in front of uh, the TV in there, I can bring it with me. If I'm gonna sit on my bed and watch TV in here, I can do it. If I'm gonna put this table up and just work at the table, everything is right here. So at least it is put into a smaller little area there rather than just having the pieces floating around. All right, last section is this little shelf here. And I have some more vintage sewing or sewing books there, my light, a little fan. This fan is handy when I'm sewing and I get warm, I can just turn it on and it could just kind of blow on my face and not on my work. Uh, I have another vintage sewing machine here. Behind here, I keep um, a book stand, which I can put patterns and things on as I'm working. And it is metal, so it's magnetic, which is great. So I can like tack things down to it. And then here, the last shelf, just here I have my quilting books. I don't have many, but what quilting books I have are there. And then underneath are all just cookbooks. All the rest and behind there are just cooking books because that's another hobby of mine. And the only thing I don't really have in here that I have um, in my closet are totes full of uh, yarn because I do um, a little bit of loom knitting. I can't knit with needles. I've tried and I just can't get the hang of it. But I do have looms, those long looms, and I can loom knit. So sometimes I will sit here in my chair or on my bed and I'll just um, loom knit. And that's just in, I think I have a couple of these plastic totes with some yarn and stuff in them. But everything that I do, all my little crafting, I can do right in this little area and that's how I keep everything in here. It kind of looks really full and sort of um, chaotic from a distance, but that is what is actually in my little area. And I just kind of wanted to show you so that you could see if you just have a little, little space, maybe like me, you can just pick it out from the end of your bed and just wherever you can, you can pack everything you need to do uh, various different hobbies in a small space and still have a little corner all your own, just depending on how you organize and arrange it. And I feel like I have a lot in this little space and um, I can do everything I need. And yeah, it is kind of a packed in space, but I try to make it, you know, sort of tidy. So it's not, you know, it doesn't look horrible or anything. And there you go. For those of you who actually wanted to know what I have in all these things and how I make it work in this little space. Hopefully that answered your questions. Nice window I can open so I can sit here and have some nice light. And you don't see it, but behind me is a big, um, 
well, big to me, it's a 32 inch TV, which I think is big for a bedroom. But so I can sit here and work and still have YouTube on, or I could be following a tutorial for sewing uh, quilting on YouTube or anything like that. And of course, my sewing supervisor. So if there are any other questions or you have any maybe tips or comments or something that I could do a little better in this little space, let me know in the comments. Really quickly, I forgot to show you the rest of my little ironing uh, boards, these do-it-yourself. And that's just because these are just so handy. They're really easy to make. You can um, see a video on them on how to do these. Lori Holt has a video. Um, this is actually her fabric uh, line that I'm using. The Fat Quarter Shop makes a video that's really good. I believe um, Missouri Star Quilt Company might even make one, but they're really kind of uh, easy to make and good videos. This one right here, I believe, is like a 12 by 16. I actually wasn't even going to make this size, but at the hardware store where they were cutting the wood for me, the guy just sort of gave me this piece of wood for free. So I made that one, but I actually really like these mini ones that I made. They are really um, lightweight. This is like a 10 by 12. And I use these when I go on retreat or if I'm going to a cl uh, class or a maker's night, maybe at the local quilt shop, because it fits in my backpack really nicely. And it's a great size and if I bring one of my little irons then I'm also not fighting for ironing board space when I am trying to um, press my quilt blocks so I can have it right by my machine and I have this one I actually made two only because I couldn't decide what fabric I liked best so I have two in that size and they're really really nice easy to make so yeah there you go <laughs>